the team has built has been built in a way for everyone and mm -hmm. everyone knew old young old uh i said the same thing twice <laughs> old young older like <laughs> slightly older slightly, <laughs> slightly younger um okay that could be the intro Cedar sign on. Shifty work into the box. And across. It's in. Oh, it's LaRue. It's a dream return. Welcome to Casual FC, an Angel City preview pod. I'm your host, Angela Morales, with my forever wonderful, technologically savvy, creative designer extraordinaire mario salazar <laughs> Ooh, see i just come to these things just to get hyped up in the evenings like <laughs> after a long ass right it's like did you have a bad day who cares <laughs> yeah let's go get hyped <laughs> perfect then my job is done okay bye like <laughs> yep exactly <laughs> we're like in the final countdown to the season. It came up real quick. It went from... Oh, I have to try. I Oh, that almost hurt me just not to do the final countdown. Okay, we did it. <laughs> we have to. <laughs> oh, that... But we're in like, what is it? T minus 11 or T minus 13 days? Four, 12 days? 13. I don't know. When does this air? Wednesday the 6th? So 11 so days. So it'll be... 11 days <laughs> we can math oh we are casual fc after dark and we just started <laughs> and i'm gonna have to try to do math later on when we're doing roster counting and stuff look i already got stuff wrong that i need to like correct myself on all right <laughs> yeah so we're, when this airs we'll be 11 days out from angel city kickoff Nine days out from the NWSL season kicking off with the Challenge Cup winner season cup thing. I don't even know what it's called. The Gotham San Diego game, basically. <laughs> and then the Saturday games. And then we play on Sunday, St. Patrick's Day, Selection Sunday, Marathon Day in LA. It's going to be chaos. It's going to be bonkers. Parking's only $20. I don't know. Let's go. Yeah. I'm at a point of just being super bummed for everybody who works in the FO because that's a pile of hot garbage to have to deal with two weeks, three weeks before your home opener. But it is. They're doing what they can. <laughs> and, you know, unfortunately, they're they're or fortunately, they're rolling with the punches and they're getting it all figured out. But then it also sucks for all the fans that have are traveling are traveling like we've mentioned plenty of times about all the fans and how far reaching angel city has that mm -hmm. people come they'll drive three hours to come to an angel city right. game we have people that are in different states that will come to see an angel city game we have people that yeah. we have visiting fans that like we're playing bay fc for the very first game for the very first time to open up the season and now all the people that were planning on flying down have to readjust their thing. Because, like, the few times that I've gone to an away day for Angel City or for one of the men's leagues or whatever, it's always been like, hey, this is going to be like a 24-hour trip. I'm, yeah, it's an excursion. Yeah, I'm flying up there and I'm flying back down. I really don't have time to – I don't have the luxury to do, like, a, a two-day or a three-day stay it's not like a vacation trip. It's a, I'm going for the game and then literally leaving and going to the airport. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I do feel for everyone that has been affected by the game change. And hopefully we don't get any more of those throughout yeah. the year. Yeah, absolutely. I may or may not have taken Monday the 18th off. Uh, I don't know. I might go to work. It depends how hard I go. Like, I don't even drink like that anymore. But like. A Sunday game's exhausting. Yeah. Oh, and it's a it's another one of those. So at least the Saturday game was going to be in the evening, right? right. We we're going to have it under the lights. Right. It was going to be beautiful opening day, and then now we're playing at four, 
thirty in the afternoon. The sun is yeah. gonna suck. Yeah, there's gonna be a cooler in Eva's car. There's gonna like we we're we're packing in for a long yeah. day. <laughs> the best part, and I don't remember if I mentioned this before, but one of our friends. Brit, it, for her birthday in January, part of her birthday present was to come to oh, the home yeah, opener. Yeah, yeah. And we were like, can you still come? <laughs> it's okay if you can't. But I'm super pumped. Brit is the best. A sometimes listener. Depends on what her schedule's looking yeah. like. But the cool part was during the World Cup, Brit was traveling and also listening to our podcast to keep up on the World Cup. And I was yeah. like, yeah, that's my friend. <laughs> so special shout out to Brit Cassero. She's also got a beautiful voice, voice of an angel, and has a gig on the 13th so, with Eva. So who? it's just going to be a party. Fun times. Fun times all around. <laughs> Promote your friends, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So let's get into the nitty gritty of what we're doing. It is the 2024 Angel City season preview. Bah, bah, bah. Bah, bah, bah. Like, like dun, dun, dun. Everything. Air horns, everything. Um, drum rolls. We, good sound. We planned... When the season ended, we're like, hey, let's get some ideas going. Maybe we'll do an episode every two to three weeks or something like that just to be relevant. And yes, we didn't do. We actually did do like an episode there. We took a few weeks off. We took a few weeks off and then there was like another. But it was also like Christmas. And that too. And (laughs) And then New Year hit. And then we have posted an episode every week since. This is insane. I know I've said it before, but I'm so grateful for this silly little podcast that isn't just a silly little podcast to either of us anymore. No, it's so special. And I'm having a blast. Mario's having a blast. It's, We're just, it's a party over it's here. The best. So yes, we are yeah. doing our, we are doing our 2024 <laughs> season preview. We've done our NWSL preview where we went down all the teams from our perspective, forgot a bunch of forgot people. Forgot people. <laughs> Thank you to the people that have left comments on yeah. anywhere on YouTube, on Spotify, on anything. And all of those help. We love them. And a lot of I want to go respond to a couple of them because I just want to. I just want to engage. Yeah, but you know, because I appreciate it. And some of them, some of them are just like, "Hey, yeah, I we did not think about that," or, you know, what you've got yeah. a point. We can be wrong, hence (laughs) this next section of roster rules. No one likes to admit it, and yet here we are. I was wrong. I was wrong, everyone. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Can I get a recording of that, and I'll send it to your wife, and then you'd be like, see? See? (laughs) It happens. Yes. Okay. (laughs) Roster rules. I have previously stated that... Players on loan still count for roster rules. I have since learned they do not. And you know Ooh. how I learned that? <laughs> I was reading through a couple posts. I was answering a couple things. I got told some stuff. And I was like, hey, you might have a point. Let me go take a look at this. I thought I read it this way. But you know what? I'm going to go take a look. I'm not a combative person. I was just like, yeah, I'll go take a look. Lo and behold, yes. The annoying part is that if you go into, okay, fair warning to everybody listening. If you want to hit the little skip, the 30 second skip button, maybe two, three <laughs> times, maybe give, give us a minute or two. If you don't want to hear the nitty gritty on roster rolls, if you do enjoy. Also, folks, what Mario just explained is the proper way to admit that you're wrong or made a mistake and not freak out and be crazy on the internet. It's all, let me go look at that. Yes, you might be upset or you have some feelings about it, but just go Google it. The internet exists. Yes. Anyway, thanks for being not (laughs) awful. So this is all (laughs) based on the 2023 season NWSL rules. So it could change for 2024. But I highly doubt it. We, uh, it I mean, there are going to be small tweaks, but nothing major. So we all know 22 to 26 players maximum. And it has to be built up from a combination of 22 players and four supplemental or 
up to 26 players on your senior roster and zero supplemental players. I think I've gone over all of those before. If I have not, and you want to know what supplemental roster players are, just DM us and I can fill you in. But according to 1.1 roster rules of the NWSL rules, a player will not be counted towards the roster or salary cap compliance if they are on an SEI, if they are listed on a 45-day injury list, are on parental leave or utilizing pregnancy benefits, uh, players on player-elected leave, or players on a mental health leave. Now, literally, one, two, three, four, five, it clearly states Mm -hmm. this is the people that are not included in roster size. And that's where I was like, yep, it was right there. It's the very first rule. And then you get down to rule number set or clause number seven. And then we get down to number 7.2, outbound loans and transfers from the NWSL. The big thing on here, one little line, upon loaning (laughs) a player, clubs will receive roster and salary cap relief. Come on, why don't you just add that damn thing as point number six to the to the whole freaking thing? <laughs> I apologize to everyone I misgave information to. Yes, <laughs> loan players do not count. So that means we have a little bit more room in our final roster building capabilities. So the other cool thing that I found out, which was... In order for a player to come back from an SEI, there needs to, they can come back, barring some rules and making sure that they're safe and whatnot. But there needs to be room in the roster, which means if your roster is completely full, you might not be able to come off of that SEI list unless some player gets traded or sold. I for the life of me, cannot find, I swear I've read somewhere where it said an SEI player returning cannot return and replace, take a player's place who's been waived. Like you can't just waive a player and be like, sorry, we don't need you anymore because our SEI player is coming back. But I can't find that stupid line of code of, of, <laughs> of law anymore. So it's driving me nuts. If anybody finds it, please let me know. But either way, Big moral of the story. There needs to be room. Going into that, where are we with ACFC? As of today, March 4th of our recording. And of course, tomorrow there's going to be like crazy ass news. And then when our episode comes out on the 6th, eh, oh. it's going to be old. But still. There's going to be more news. We're going to do a preview for the Bay FC game. We're still not going to know the final roster. Exactly. We're basically not going to know the roster until game day, (laughs) which is stressful. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Okay. Where we're at total of 24 contracted players. You've probably seen other lists of players floating around out there. There was a large list of 40 players in some type of early Mm -hmm. February. And that's when spring training started. So you're allowed to have up to 42 players when spring training starts. That includes all of your contracted. It includes non-roster invitees or NRIs. It includes any U18 invitees. And it includes your draftees out out of the big draft that we ended up doing. So that was that big giant list. That list has been whittled down to 31. There are... There's still one NRI, a non-roster invitee. Why am I saying invitee that way? It sounds overly <laughs> proper. A non-roster inv- invitee. A non- <laughs> <laughs> and a couple of U18s. And we have two out of our three uh, draftees still with us. Felicia Knox and Maddie Curry. Garziano, Garziano is, how was let go in that first uh, cutting. And... The final roster will need to be set March 13th at the very latest and needs to be submitted to the to the NWSL, which literally is a few days before the, the season starts, before our first game. Yeah. Wild. 
it's wild. Um, yeah, it's legitimately the Wild West for just about every team in the league, I think, right now, in, in the culling of the rosters and whittling down of who's actually staying on your roster and who's not and all that. But here's what we know so far. So far. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So far, again, as of March 4th at 9.18 p.m. <laughs> We're going to hit stop and something's going <laughs> to happen. But as of right now, our keeper class are three goalkeepers. We have Angelina Anderson, Didi Heracich, and the newcomer in Hannah Stombart. Stombart. Oh my God. My brain is pudding. <laughs> I'm not even going to edit that Stomba. out. Like that. Uh, my. Stomba. Stomba. Come on. Stomba. <laughs> she is a new signing from Japan. Friends with June. Hopefully helping keep June's spirits up. But. I, All of them are insanely good. Yeah. We know on the casual FC here, we are Anderson fans. We are rooting for... I Listen, I am all here for tall women in sports because I am taller than I think every single person but her on this team. And I appreciate the fact that she's got a crazy long wingspan because I want her to take up the whole box. Yeah. I go. yeah. So... You know what, Dee, Dee I, we love you. It's been great having you on the team, and we love the <laughs> the knowledge that you're going to be bringing to all of this. Oh yeah, I feel Dee, Dee might end up being a second keeper. I'm curious how that's going to go because I have a similar feeling, but I think it's only because there's such solid competition between the three of them in the different pressers and interviews that the team has done both Becky and Angelina have said oh yeah we it's a bloodbath we are going toe to toe every day because nobody is the starting keeper yet yeah no nobody's won it it's basically all of theirs to lose at the moment yeah and if what if we just come out with a three keeper rotation like why not why stick to one keeper all season just mess with people it's like when your teacher starts off the school you're saying like look at the moment you have an a so it's up to you to keep it (laughs) yep (laughs) whatever they whatever they want to do like i'm down i i can't wait to see hannah play i like i will never forget watching angelina anderson save that pk and then watching it on replay 900 times to see just exactly how she did it. And all it was a flinch of her hand that I don't even know if she did. Any listener who's who watched or listened to this after that match was probably like, Angela, shut up. We get it. She blocked it. I'm like, no, you don't understand. <laughs> it still just blows my mind. And Dee Dee has such a great veteran presence. But like I said before, you know, like Dee Dee, it's borrowed time in that sense. She had planned to retire got the opportunity here so I'm so curious how the coaching changes the competition the internal competition changes have really impacted her training I'm just excited I'm a fan of all three of these women and I hope I get to see all three of them play this season yep yep just to recap for everybody Didi is our tried and true vet Angelina was our rookie last year and did phenomenal in the Blue chance Evans in the mind. chances she got she did not waste and hannah is our brand yeah. new signing from over this break and excited to see what happens there yeah and she's played all over japan with the national team i believe she's on that team she's or she she has experience it's not like she's fresh blood. yeah she was a hopeful for the japan team for the japanese team i believe that's so, right yeah but you know what sometimes you just need to change the scenery to get your confidence back up. And hopefully that's what we are. They probably saw June's progression and said, oh, send her over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And defense, my heart, my my soul of a team, regardless of sport. We've got M.A. Vignola, Woo! Megan Reed, Paige Nielsen, our captain, Allie Riley, our vice captain, co-captain, I don't remember what they called it officially, <laughs> Sarah Gordon, Merritt Mathias, Madison Hammond, 
Giselle Thompson and on loan Vanessa Gilles, uh, who was in BMO this weekend uh, before Canada. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> She'll be down. We'll 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 be playing. The U.S. will be playing Vanessa. I know. Down. Okay. <laughs> yes. And Vanessa is the player that, for the longest time, I was like, adamant, no, she counts. She <laughs> is part of the roster. We have one spot. No, she doesn't count. She is on loan. JK Long. Sorry. We have two spots. But yes. M.A. Vingola. We got Reed. <laughs> we got fellow podcaster, Paige. Right. Paige. Man, it's, it's just, everybody. our defense is stacked. Yeah. I'm excited for this defense. Now, we are casual here. We are casual FC. Are you? Don't ask me who's on the right, who's on the left. How does their formation work? <laughs> Look, I just want them to like put their Captain Planet rings together and <laughs> make a defensive line back there and just hold it down. <laughs> That's all I care. I don't care who's on the left, who's on the right, or who's in the middle. Just all be there. Yes. Like, please. And you know what? Take the courage. Put your hand up and be like, coach, let's swap. Let's do a little swoopy swap. Let someone else get a chance in here. Swap. <laughs> yeah, I had this in our notes to say later, but I'm going to say it right now because I feel like it's the appropriate time to say this. I don't know if we're going to have any iron women on this team this season because we're stacked in that sense. We have a deep roster and if everybody can stay healthy, knock on wood, the health is there. The stamina is there. The training is there. There's no, we have a starting lineup and then a second starting lineup with the quality of players we have. Um, I'm going to ask you later, which Jersey do you think I bought or whose Jersey (laughs) do you think I bought? Besides alleys, I'm curious. It's not cap, not caps. Not caps. No. <laughs> no, but I, I really think we're gonna have a breakout season for Madison Hammond. I think she's just gonna shoot through the sky. Yeah. She's been her like her language around the game has changed. Her language around the team, and it's very much that sense of ownership, that sense of, of pride in her position, and this veteran skill where it's oh you're different right now you're scary you're scary you're locked in and it's not even it was like january when this interview came out and it was like oh you're locked in that early dang girl let's go let's go and also may just because she's great she's amazing and she's gonna have a a freaking stupidly good season Mm -hmm. like we've said before feel it in my bones yeah when you see those buns it's already too late (laughs) You see the top buttons, it's already too late. And then yep. Reed and Nielsen, Riley, Gordon. I mean, you are you name any one of these. And then we have the little sister, but still really amazing in her own yeah. right. Giselle, the fresh, the blood. fresh blood, right? The, the new one to the back line here, Giselle Thompson, yeah. who is Alyssa Thompson's sister. But that's going to be an awesome back line like i said captain planet rings just get them all together um you know absolutely and for those of you who are newer to women's soccer or are just fans of angel city and don't know much about merit she is a fantastic player she is the featured person in a very storied nwsl meme via twitter that kind of sucks for her but it's great um but she had a very rough year last year and Cameron Nia did a great article and interview with Merritt where he talked to her kind of about what was going on, everything over the course of last season, she inj- she comes in with a little bit of a knock. It becomes a bigger injury that gets impacted by her not healing correctly only to find out that she has type two diabetes only to then have her dog die. So the second I read that she got the diabetes diagnosis along with her dog passing away, I was like, girl, take the time. That's too much. There's such a weird stigma around diabetes. And I could go on for this for hours about the stigma around it and what it means and how it impacts people's lives and how your liver works and how insulin works and glucose and all the kinds of things because I know too much about it for personal reasons. But 
yeah, having to completely adjust your life and make sure your body's working correctly when you're doing all the things you're like, quote unquote, supposed to be doing mentally messes you up just completely. I'm really hoping she has a great season. She can be a bit of a controversial player, but I really hope that she can come in and just be revitalized. Let's talk about the midfield before I cry. All right. So (laughs) in that midfield, just like we were talking about uh, the slightly older sister, (laughs) Alyssa Thompson, (laughs) we've got Amandine Henri, who is officially back. I will be the first to admit I said it when she went on loan and I was like, I will believe it when she actually comes back and sets foot back here because that's the- fair. We've been done dirty by some loans. Exactly. But <laughs> she went off to France. She played, got her training in and she is now back with the team and ready to go. We've got yep. Lily Nabet. Elizabeth Eddy, who came in last year as a uh, international, what uh, what are they called? World Cup. World Cup. Replacement There player. we go. World Cup replacement player. <laughs> National team replacement player. There we go. That's the term. Yeah. And then has stayed on and just been like, dude, you're awesome. You're going to stay here. Elizabeth Eddy yeah. has just been with the team through all of that and is gelling and everything. Then our two new acquisitions, we've got Maggie Dutry Howard and Super Solid Rocky again, freaking uh, Rodriguez. Man, Rocky alone. If we had done nothing else in midfield but picked up Rocky, I'd be like, okay, fine. Yeah. Dope. So that leads again to just a very solid looking midfield. There's probably better people out there to be like, look, three of those midfielders are all on the left side and that's not going to do you any good. <laughs> look, don't harsh my mellow. I- <laughs> I'm enjoying this. They're going to have their own Captain Planet yeah. rings. They're going to team up with defense here. It's going to be amazing. Right. And just remember, too, because somebody's listed as a certain position doesn't mean they don't play others. We've seen M.A. kind of slide into the midfield a little bit and just charge up the sides. We've seen Madison help out in the midfield when we were a Swiss cheese midfield. Alyssa is a mid, like an attacking midfielder where she plays more offensively. There's different roles for every position, and we're good. Yeah. We're solid. I, I really think that there's such a great variety a veteran experience and fresh blood and new ideas and sturdy winning mindsets amongst our midfield alone. Mandy has won in Portland. Mandy has played internationally and won internationally. Rocky has won in Portland. They have this wonderful winning mentality because it takes a different mindset to go from being like, oh yeah, I play professionally to being like, oh no, I win professionally. Yeah, That's different. You have to know when to lock in and be like, okay, now or never, because if we don't win. There's a reason why whenever you hear about team building or the roster of a team, the conversation of, oh, they have playoff experience. They have final experience. Yes, all of these players play at an elite level. But when you get to... And games are always a high pressure situation because you're a professional athlete Mm -hmm. and you're performing in front of 22,000 people. At minimum these days. That's already high pressure enough. But then now you add, this is for the trophy. This is for the championship. This Mm -hmm. is for you to keep going on in this tournament. That pressure builds and will act a little different. If you've ever been in that type of situation in your own life, you know that The butterflies are different. They hit different. So, you know, that's why you always talk about having that veteran. You can't just say we're going to bring out all the rookies and keep our salary cap low because that's not going to do you any good. And having the veteran experience and all of that not only brings up the players that they're around, but brings up the rest of the team because you learn from everybody in every position. Absolutely. That was very well said. Thank you. (laughs) And so now (laughs) we're at 
our forwards, and we have some sad news on our forwards. But let's start with the good ones, and yeah. let's start with the people that we are excited and happy to have. Katie Johnson. We've got Clarice Levion. Another player that I will admit, again, I was wrong because NWSL doesn't... Somehow this slipped through the information. Somehow slipped through the information. Since. There was one clear post that said <laughs> Claire Emsley is part of the team that has a contract in 2024. Did not see that. <laughs> So the whole time I was like, Claire Emsley is not And signed. neither one of us yeah. saw it. Like, we were all freaking out. We had a couple other people like, no, I don't think she has a contract. Like, this is a general consensus. And then we were all like, nope, okay. she's on the she's roster. Got it. Okay. got it, got it, got Fire it. Fire alarm turned off. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Claire Emsley, <laughs> definitely on the team. So we got Jasmine Spencer. We got Sydney Leroux. Our new signing, Casey Fair. From Korea and Masaya, another freaking bright, was a pickup over <laughs> the off season, which has been just an incredible add to the team. And really quick, I don't know if you've seen the media day pictures. Have oh, yeah, Masaya. But there is one picture of Masaya where she's hair flip down on one knee doing the aerial Little Mermaid hair flip, but the light is behind her. She's got these beautiful orange golden braids and her hair is in the most beautiful mohawk. It's like the best fanning of the oh. hair. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah, everybody I know has been like, have you seen this? Oh my God. Because that. that's also, for the record, I don't know if you know this because I don't know if you've ever tried to do this with any length of hair. It is exceptionally difficult to be upside down yeah. and flip your head back with any sort of grace, any sort <laughs> of not looking like a wet rat in the water. There is no graceful way to do that. And somehow she did. And Magic. her hair is fairly long, which does get heavy. It's so long. It's heavy. So like when you do that, you're like, in my mind, if I were to do that, I'd have that strained face of like, Urgh! and there's just no right? pretty way to do like, it. Ugh. And she and it looks so effortless and elegant and amazing. And so I wonder, had they tied it all up? But it's no, you see the motion in the picture. And oh, man, that picture is so cool. It's a great Like, it's so neat. And our two points of note where we're both sad here. Yeah. June Endo suffering a season-ending injury. Again, the ACL curse during spring training. Yep. So she is out. I did get to meet June at an LAFC game recently. She was walking. She was actually going into the stadium ahead of me. I was like, cool. I told my brother, hey, I saw June. Cool. And then we went to go get a beer. And then she was standing like right there, right after we were done getting our beer. So I was like, we love you. I don't want to bug you. And then kept going. <laughs> we love you. I hope you have a great time. But you're great. But don't jump around. <laughs> yeah. Like sit during the match. It's okay. <laughs> Yeah. And the one that everyone was reading way too much into the tea leaves <laughs> when the very... Welcome to the NWSL geez, fan base, yeah, my dude. Seriously. <laughs> Everybody was going <laughs> ape sh sh when that first 40-player roster came out and there was no SEI next to Kristen Press's name. And lo and behold... This second 31-player roster, the SEI is back. Yep. There were reports but, that Kristen wasn't even at training yeah. yet because she was still working on it. She was still training or doing her PT, doing all of that stuff, trying to get back. But it looks at the moment that she will be SEI for this year also. Yeah, and that doesn't mean that she won't be able to come back as long as there's roster space, like we said. Yes. So As long as she meets all the conditions. I'm wondering if... So, if you add all of these things up... Actually, mm -hmm. we're not there yet. <laughs> let's, talk about, let's talk about our amazing forwards first. We've got yes. Katie Johnson. Woo-woo! Hometown girl. Monrovia, it's close enough. <laughs> Or something like that. And then we've got Le'Veon and Emsley and just 
the fact that we were going Listen. crazy on both of them, just oh. wondering, like, were they signed? Le'Veon got a, a later. Yeah. All of that. Jasmine Spencer. Short, spunky. will Bicycle kick. A bicycle kick. Sydney, Sydney LaRue. LaRue. Casey Fair being this Korean phenom player. And mm-hmm. Messiah Bright. So I think we're solid in the forwards. And Endo, I wouldn't. I'm just so sad because it's an Olympic year. It's an Olympic year. She was doing her development was so great and she was doing so well with the Japanese team that. Yeah, this is heartbreaking. Hopefully she can recover from it fairly soon. I as much as I would personally love to see her back this year. I please don't rush it. Please don't rush it. Don't there's probably there's not probably there's been plenty of examples of people who have rushed it and made it worse or have been forced to rush it Been forced to rush it and making it worse so please don't do that take your time (laughs) yeah and this is or go ahead i was gonna say learn from Kristen and take your time and when you're ready you'll be ready um yeah it just it is what it is yeah this is a similar situation like with our midfield where we've got very solid veteran expertise. We've got these like flash in the pan, brand new, tiny little young children babies. I say that because they're like 20 years younger than me and that's, that's gross. True. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> I also found out that Jackie from Women Kickballs is 10 years younger than me. <laughs> like by... A couple weeks. Exactly. She or She's another May baby. Oh, okay. But if you listen to that little blip of an episode, whenever we release it, that's there. Um, me feeling 100 years old all over again. But we have such great experience in different ways. And even our younger players are coming in with a truckload of experience. Yeah. Casey Fair has played international already. She's scored in the World Cup. She understands the big stages. Messiah Bright was in the running for Rookie of the Year, so she can put up numbers. You have such a great combination of attacking mids, like Alyssa, Rocky, Mandy, like these players that are very defensive-minded but also play to score. And then you couple that with defensive players who are ready to be like, oh, you want a defensive goal? Okay, here comes M.A. Vignola, change the whole thing. Like, here comes Paige's like header from out of nowhere to get a goal like you have a team that has completely bought in every single one of these players it's already so evident to me that they've bought into the system um i don't know if you saw but over the weekend they cameron nia i think it was interviewed rocky no, after in like a post no, game I didn't see it. and rocky's like oh yeah i played 90 minutes in all three games because like i could <laughs> Becky's training style is so intense. This is easy. This is fine. I'm good. I'm straight. This is fine. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> oh, oh yeah. We're used to such high levels of competition in, in training. And a lot of musicians see this way. A lot of athletes see things this way where it's like practice with your team or rehearsal or like that combined thing isn't where you get better. You get better in your private practice where you're working out all the little nitty gritty details. You come together as a group to excel together. Like you take all the things, all the pieces, you put them together. And then that's where you practice being great for the game. Yeah, yeah. And that's truly what I think is happening here. This is it's exciting. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get my hopes up too high, but too late. <laughs> so if you've, counted all of the names that we just went through that and just like we said at the beginning of this we are at 24 <laughs> players who have contracts that means there are currently two spots available for anyone, just anyone. And everyone. if you still want to go they're still training you got two weeks if yeah, you want to go out wanna... there and be like hey pick me coach <laughs> but we have our two draftees and there's mm-hmm. the couple of invite um it <laughs> invitees invitees the invited players that are a uh, part of the training staff at the moment any one of them can be signed and added to the roster we have two more spots so it'll be exciting to see what happens i think all as we've said before 
the way the team is already, all we can do is get better by adding a few extra mm-hmm. pieces. I everybody's that we need is there. And it sounds like Becky has them gelling the way they started gelling at the end of last year. And hopefully that yeah. gets us going into this new season. So what is a good season for ACFC? Everybody staying healthy. Yes. <laughs> That's going to be making number it, one. Making it to the finish line first. That's my first request to the soccer gods is please keep my team healthy and those who aren't and who are recovering from injuries please make that quick and solid and I, something they don't have to worry about in the future something that I was thinking about when you said you'd be surprised or you wouldn't be surprised if there was no Iron Woman this year mm-hmm. I would welcome that because that means that there was enough rotation to keep everybody playing at a high level and yeah. keep but also resting. rested. And then that just means hopefully with all of that, we also ended up at a very high place in those standings. And yes, making yeah. the playoffs would be a great season for a- Angel City. I'm Yeah, and as a reminder, it's top eight this year. It's not top six, it's top, it's top eight. eight. With the addition of two new teams, it's top eight now. There's no more buys. First and second place don't automatically yeah. get a buy anymore. Top eight automatically go into a tournament bracket and will play a tournament to the final. So they should get they should get Tom from MySpace to announce the playoff spots as the top eight. Please. This is for elder millennials and elder millennials only. Please, Tom from MySpace, please come and be like, ladies and gentlemen, like some my top big eight. <laughs> shenanigan thing. Here is my NWSL top eight. Please. How cool would that be? That'd be so stupid, and I love it so. It just has to. If that doesn't happen on like some side social media channel, I'm. I'm gonna find it. Somebody, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit some people up <laughs> on Twitter and be like, here, maybe I will unlock my account. Do you know, Tom? I've made most of my social media private for the first time in I don't know twenty years. <laughs> I'm going. I, I don't even know if I have my space anymore, but I know the website still exists. I'm gonna go back mm-hmm. in there and be like, Tom, I'm looking for you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Tom, are you there? It's like, oh. <laughs> All right. And then. Anyway. Okay. And then. Uh, the, we make the playoffs. Yeah, that's full. That's it. And I don't see that not happening, barring any major catastrophic player issues. And you know what? And knock on wood, which I am right now. Yes. I don't know if that's picking up on my. It is. But and I just banged on my table. Desperately. So I don't know if that picked up, but <laughs> Yes. I think we'll be fine there. One yeah. one note that I threw on here, and I love <laughs> Angela's response. I got, I got so mad when I read it. <laughs> Under my notes for what's a good season for ACFC, I was like, what? Short of a championship, is it a failure? And what was your answer? In all caps, this is absolutely not WTF. What I didn't put in, what is wrong with you? People forget that on... The professional level, on the elite level, it's not, does everybody want to win a championship? Duh, of course. That's why you're playing. But as long as your current season is better than the last one, it's a building you year. win. This one for sure. Oh, yeah. Like, And that question was this, totally this season... not there to be like, this is what I think. <laughs> I know. And so my response to her when we were looking at our script was, ha ha. I know. He knew. Yeah. He just poked the bear a little bit. <laughs> I, I know that there are fans out there that are very much black and white of you win a championship or you're dead to me. We are not those fans. Mm-hmm. We are behind. We're homers. We're going to be behind yeah. this team thick and thin. We... We'll criticize when criticism is necessary. We will praise and speak highly when it's absolutely deserved cry about and it. cry about it and <laughs> choke on our own words. <laughs> but it's never a black and white thing. Life is not black and white. You know what? However the season goes, 
it just looks bright from here right now and it looks messiah bright from here <laughs> you're welcome <Ba-dum-tsh. laughs> all right so with that being said where do you think we will land in that top eight i want to say third fourth or fifth honestly third fourth or fifth okay I'm... Because I still don't know how aggressively goal scoring we're going to be. If we pick up at the 5-1, to one, like where we left off, if we pick up doing that, sure, we can come in a lot higher. But goal differential takes some of that out of our hands. But if we keep a winning record, we go undetweeted again? Ooh. Bet. If we start an yeah. undetweeted run, we're going to have to paint our own banner. I'm going I'm wearing my shirt every day. Like it's going to be one of those little kid, oh, I'm superstitious. Mm-hmm. I can't take this off. Like, what did you wear on you know, June 15th when this started? <laughs> I Yeah, I'm going to be obnoxious. <laughs> I'm guessing I'm going to I agree with you third fourth or fifth. I'm guessing more third or fourth giving us home field yeah. advantage. Because in a t- in a top eight, most likely, and I, don't know, I haven't looked this up, but most likely in a in a top eight tournament, top four teams get home field advantage. But and then the way the NWL normally does their playoffs, pl- uh, the final is always going to be in a neutral place. So it doesn't matter. You're not going to get home field advantage for the final. Yeah. So the best you can do is Honestly, get it in if the we... quarters and semi. If we make it out of the first round of the playoffs, I'm fine. Yes. Then the season exactly. will have been a collective success. Because, especially if San Diego doesn't. <laughs> because you can talk all the smack you want. You might have won the shield, but we made it the same. We made it just as far as you did. Yep. Just saying. Yep. I'm real sassy with my head <laughs> motions right now for those who can't see me. <laughs> So as no, I'm just so excited about the season overall. Yes, yeah. So basically, as a final note, what I wrote was I am stoked about the player acquisitions that we've gotten so far, the relative health of all of our players, which I am crossing my fingers, my toes, my eyes, anything, <laughs> my legs, anything that can be crossed is being crossed, just to be like, look, this is we're gonna stay healthy. Yeah. All the good vibes that everyone sends us because of listening to this podcast, that's what it's going towards. It's keeping these players healthy. I feel like we're running like a telephone. Yeah. For the next hour, some... all of the good vibes that you send to Angel City will be matched. We need to clear some Bye. Sarah McLaughlin audio. <laughs> In the arms of an yeah. angel. Hold a cat. <laughs> In the arms of an angel. Get it? Huh? Oh. Boom. Okay. <laughs> And then, uh, although it, I am... We are pudding for brains. <laughs> uh, although I am super <laughs> bummed that my favorite player and my daughter's favorite player, June, will be out this season. I think the rest of the squad is solid. And one mm-hmm. that the one and only Becky Sparkles is going to do <laughs> great things with. So I am excited for this year. Yeah. And on the Becky Sparkles note, I know I think I mentioned it last episode after the kit launch event, but thank you to coach for being so gracious and so welcoming of our amazing tour shirt. She loved it. Thank you to Julie for buying shirts and wearing them in the office. Like it, the support from the team has been so wonderful of as of late. Eva got spun around by Allie Riley. Look at this shirt. And then turned her around. Look at the back. (laughs) Do you see this? Like to everybody just, the support from the FO has been great with talking to us and, and inviting us to things and just being connected with their fan base. It's so dope. I'm going to just, let's talk about something else. I'm just tired and I'm going to cry. So okay, anyway, that was going to make you cry. I know we I'm about to get wrecked. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to turn this over to the kids. We have our yep. long running kid super fan in Josie and we decided hey early on we're like hey we're gonna give her a little bit of airtime we're gonna ask her what she is excited for the season and then after doing our 
SG interviews and talking with all the groups, specifically talking to Relentless Ladies, knowing that yeah. their kids basically started their own little group called Relentless Tamariki. And it's basically the kids SG. I was like, okay, if we can't get them for their own little interview, we're going to get them on this pod to see what they're looking forward to. Get your heartstrings ready. Going to hear a bunch of kids talk about yeah, and what then, they want. <laughs> and then you didn't even introduce oh, like your most important. And then I also... I'm taking over. <laughs> no. And then... My Girl Scout cookie supplier, Mario's daughter Maddie, is wanted to record it and be part of the podcast. And how could we say no? Because, of course. But this is just so special because it's yet another generation of kids seeing these women play at such a high level. And cue these recordings because I'm starting to cry. (laughs) Hi everybody, this is Angela from Casual FC Pod, and I am here with the podcast-like celebrity, special guest, favorite person, Josie, and I'm going to ask her a few questions and see what she's excited about for this season. You want to say hi? Yeah. Hello, I am finally here, (laughs) and you did not hear me on video, this is, ah, this is on video, but this is actually... In person. <laughs> okay, so Joe, what are you most excited about for this season so far? I don't know. I just really like going to the games and hanging out with friends and stuff. But I'm really upset that Fish isn't going to be here. If you're hearing this, Fish, please come back. At least to visit. Fish is on a, like, a great adventure now. And though I'm sure Fish will come back for a game, and we'll make sure to tag them in this post so they know that you miss them a lot. I miss you. <laughs> yeah, big loss for the social media and fan club side of things because a lot of our younger fans, older fans, every, every fan loved Fish and loved all the work they did. What are you, who do you think is going to score in the first game? Obviously, Alyssa Thompson. Never Alyssa Thompson. <laughs> My mom's name's Alyssa, Alyssa too. <laughs> <laughs> Who else do you think is going to score? Because I think we're going to have multi goals that game. June Endo. Uh, what's the new player's name again? Messiah? Messiah Bray. Maybe a Sid LaRue goal? Yeah. I don't know if we'll get another bicycle kick, but I think it'll be a good game regardless. <laughs> That bicycle kick was awesome. And then my mom showed me this video of how she was teaching her son how to do mm-hmm. the bicycle kick. Yeah, it's a family tradition now to learn how to do bicycle kicks in the Lurie family, which is so cool. Let's see. What do you think is, What do you think we're going to have at FanFest this year? What do you think the team's going to do? What do you mean by that? So what do you think there's going to be new games, new food, activities? Because we've got, what, face painting and coloring, and what else do you think we'll have? Uh, I don't think it'll be diff- different. I think it'll be pretty much the same. Yeah? They did it. It's, they've done it for every year they did mm-hmm. it. But the games aren't, they don't really have games. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've had a lot of the same stuff, but I think it's going to be a little bit more because now we have more fans, more people with different backgrounds, all kinds of stuff. All right, so if you see us at a game, you'll most likely see Josie because we're always hanging out. Our families are best friends. We went out to brunch today, and we're hanging out. I think that's it. I don't know what else to ask. Oh, she's got some news. Just so you know, if you see me, I'm more than happy to take autographs. (laughs) She is a podcast celeb. She's been on Paige Nielsen's podcast, and she's been on ours now. So... If you see us at the games, come say hi to Josie, get to know her family. Everybody's super cool. And yeah, we'll see you at BMO soon. Go Angel City. Go Angel City. Let's win this. My name is Isaiah, and I'm seven years old, and I'm from Relentless Tamariki, and I love talkies and cheering on Didi. Love, 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 ba la ba Hi, my name is Mila, and I am seven years old, and 
and I'm really excited to see uh, Messiah Bright play. Hello, my name is Annabelle, and I'm eight years old from Relentless Tamariki's, and I'm most looking forward to is to see Angelina Anderson play. Hi, my name is Olivia and I'm 11 years old and I'm from Relentless Tamariki and um, what I'm most looking forward to is seeing the new players play. My name is Maddie and I'm 6 years old. I'm looking forward to that our team is going to win because I really like Angel City. And what chant do you know? Angel City. Angel City. Angel City. City. Hmm. Man, we're lucky. Those kids are so excited and we're so lucky. Thank you to Josie. Thank you to the Tamariki in Isaiah, Layla, Annabelle, and Olivia. And thank you to my own little Maddie for contributing <laughs> to today's podcast and what they are looking forward to in the new season. And that's what we're all here for, right? And that's what we're all about is the fact that the team has built something where Fans, both young and old, seasoned to brand new, can appreciate. And it's shown in how many kids and how many families can have fun uh, yeah. at these events and get into it. But it's not a very, it's not a take your kids to the baseball game pastime, like they're going to get up and they're going to go play in the dirt while mm -hmm. you're trying to watch the game like they get into it and i'm excited for it and i love it so thank you to all the kids that wanted to be part of this fun little goofy podcast and if you are listening and you are a small child and you'd like to send us a voice note have parents hit us up let us know we'll figure out a way to do it yep and then the last thing we're gonna get into <laughs> which is where to watch and where to listen. I'm going to shorten this up substantially from <laughs> what I said in the last episode. But just to repeat, 2024 is a double-edged sword for the NWSL when it comes to broadcasting. The good, it's a huge broadcasting deal with lots of places to watch. The bad, there's lots of places to watch. It's super fragmented. The broadcast schedule is all over the place. So honestly, just check out the graphics that I've made on Instagram for when and where to catch each Angel City match. Inevitably, things will probably change game day to game day. So if anything changes, always keep up with the latest info on each one of our preview episodes. Yep. In broad strokes, though, there are... There's five places to watch the games. Amazon Prime Video, which will be Friday night games. All Friday night games will be on Amazon Prime. So if you are an Amazon Prime subscriber already, you have Amazon Prime Video. You can also sign up to it without having Amazon Prime. It's whatever it is, $8.99, I don't know. I haven't looked it up. But all Friday night games will be there. All Saturday games will be double headers on Ion Television, which is over the air uh, TV. So order your rabbit ears and plug them into your super high def TV and enjoy free TV over the air. All of if those you games. Have again, cable, you can also get it on cable, like Spectrum or whatever. Yeah, I say this it, as somebody who watches a lot of sports and has cable. <laughs> yeah, it, Ion TV is on cable too. The last episode, I went down a lot of channels yep. where you can watch it it's also saved on our instagram highlights so i have all the channels listed there for the la santa barbara area for the san diego area 
and for the Ventura County area. So Everywhere. Yeah. So go check it out there. And then the rest of the games will be also shown on CBS slash Paramount Plus, the ever-hated CBS Sports Network, which Mm -hmm. nobody has a freaking subscription to. When games are being broadcast on ESPN, there's gonna they're gonna be on a variety of it's either gonna be ESPN, ABC, ESPN Plus, ESPN Two, ESPN and El Ocho, all of them. <laughs> no matter what though, when it's on ESPN, it will be on ESPN Plus, both in English and in Spanish. So you have that. And lastly, there are games that are not gonna be on any one of these actual streaming options. Those few games are going to be on a new service called NWSL Plus. It's free for now. Just go onto the NWSL website, look for the NWSL Plus logo and sign up. It's basically they're converting how you would watch the games if you were an international fan on the NWSL website to show domestic games. If you watch within the United States, there's going to be about 70-ish games that you can watch on there. And watch replays of. I Absolutely. think only those 70 games, though. I don't think you're going to be able to watch replays of the games that happen on any of the other networks. That would make That's... sense, unfortunately. But unfortunately. replay is a replay at this point. Yeah. And if you are international or if you are tricky like that and know how to VPN, you will get all games on NWSL Plus as mm-hmm. a replay. So Nice. Get your get your Googling figures out and <laughs> figure that out. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to our season preview. We're all so pumped. Yeah, I just I'm just so freaking excited. We've got a whole bunch of content coming up because there's roughly one billion games this season. So if you like what you heard today and you want to hear more match previews, more shenanigans, more Olympic previews, more more. Make sure to hit the subscribe button on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and a whole bunch more places. YouTube. There's a whole bunch of places just to, to I just malfunctioned to subscribe. So make sure you go and sub- subscribe wherever you can. <laughs> oh, it's late, people. Yeah. I've been up for so many hours and recorded earlier with Jackie. There's a whole bunch. See, we've got tons of stuff coming. So Check out casualfc.com for all of our podcast links, every place that's playing, our merch, a way to share more women's soccer podcasts with us to go with our support women's soccer podcasts, t-shirts, all the things. Anything Casual FC is going to be on that website or linked to or linked from the website to the places, whatever. It's the hub of info. So. Along with that, make sure you follow us on social media at Casual FC Pod, Instagram, Twitter, Threads, TikTok, YouTube. Um, I think that's it so far. That's, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> I have a hard time keeping up with all those, anyways. Right. Yeah. One of them is always lagging, and right now it's Twitter because, like, ugh. well, it's hard. But make sure you, like we said earlier, tell a friend about the podcast, share the good news, uh, rep the team hard. It brings us good luck. We pass that on to the team. We're banking some piggy banks, going to ship them over to the FO. So, yeah, we started this thing in the middle of the season. We turned the whole ship around collectively as a fan base, as a team, as in everything. So let's just start start it up this way and see how, see how far this can take us. Also, if you feel so inclined, please help support the podcast by buying some merch at shop.casualfc.com or by buying us a coffee. You can check out our link in all of our social bios or go to buymeacoffee.com slash casual FC pod. Thank you to everyone who's donated so far. There's been a lot of people sending over like five, 10 bucks and Mario and I that joked in the amazing. beginning. Yeah. Like we joked in the beginning, like our goal is to make enough to, for each of us to get a fancy coffee. I think by now we could get two each. Yep. We could even possibly split a small lunch. Like, <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Yep. Which, you know, it's gonna little happen. goals, small steps. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? We're just working our little baby steps up to an empire. If we can, if we can break <laughs> even with how we make yep. the podcast, then then we've that's made successful. it successful. We've made it. But you know what? <laughs> we've also made it because people have been giving us buying us coffees. So 
Either way, thank you so much, everyone. It's amazing. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Yeah. So guess what, guys? We'll see you next weekend. Next like, weekend at BMO. <laughs> if you see us, we'll have merch. Come get some stickers. Show us your merch if you're wearing some. Whether it's, you know, team issued, ours, somebody else's, just come say hi. Um, take pictures, we'll say hi, we'll I don't know, whatever. I felt I was gonna be like, we'll sign autographs. I was like, why would we do that? That's so weird. We'll give you a high five. <laughs> Definitely. But it's finally time. We'll be back next week with our first regular season match preview against wow, Bay it's FC. Been so long. I know. <laughs> we have to remember how to do this. <laughs> Ah, first match preview. All right, let's get this going. All right, everybody. Have a great week. We will see you at BMO real soon, and we'll catch you next week with a preview. Later days. Bye. Bye.